We're back in FTB skies, and after harnessing the power of the wind last episode, it's time we put it to use. Today, we improve our diet with a few automated farms using Create, we build a huge new island in our floating empire, and upgrade our storage to deal with the influx of new items we'll be getting from our mega factory. Oh no, oh no wait a minute, the factory's next episode. How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. Sorry, I got a bit carried away there, but we will at least sort out a storage island. However, first off today, we're going to deal with something nice and simple. Oh, my days! Okay, not quite what I meant. Oh, I haven't even got any ranged weapons. I don't, don't blow up my base. This is not a good start. Haha! -ha. So as I was about to say, we're going to jump down this hole. We're going to put on some armor, because we're smart. We're going to grab a shield, and we're going to deal with this problem. Oh, baby creeper? No! Why are there baby creepers? This is the worst. Problem solved. Now we can actually farm in peace. I do have a loose plan up here for how things are going to work. And it is, of course, going to be using Create. We're going to be automatically harvesting the crops and things that we plant up here. And I think what I might actually do is just put down a few different fields and then maybe mix up the crops within those fields. And we're not even going to harvest everything because we still want it to look nice. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just mark out where I want these fields to be. So say, for example, that's the center of one field. We can have one that just sort of goes around this sort of way. And what I might actually do is dig out the hole where I want the center of the field to be. So we'll have one field there. We'll have one field around here. We'll stick another one centered maybe about there. So that's going to be roughly this sort of size. And I think we will put a fourth one in here as well, which once again is going to be roughly that sort of size. So the bits I'm marking out size-wise is just what's going to be harvested. We are actually going to have these whole areas pretty much as filled, and there's going to be crops everywhere. I just need to know where the actual important ones are going to be. Because as I say, that's what's going to be auto-collected for us. This is just the start, however. So what we need to do now is to get power over here. So I need to dig a whole bunch of trenches. And I need to take the power from this windmill here. And get it into these four separate locations. And I think that should just about do it. So this is the power that's coming down from the windmill. We've made sure to avoid the mob farm. We kind of go out the back of the windmill and down. And then we're actually slowing it down again a little bit. Because, well, we did speed it up inside the windmill. But I really like the cogs up there. And I kind of want to keep them. However, we did actually want the farm spinning around that fast in themselves so this should just about do it and then what i've done is i've just used shafts and gearboxes and it links up to each and every farm location and of course if we wanted to we can easily add some more but now we need to get outside and actually build these farms so in theory these should be fairly straightforward what i want to do is remove that and we should see our rotational power there it is so let's get this up to the surface uh in fact we want it one lower than the surface and these contraptions are going to be fairly simple so we're just going to use a mechanical bearing there and what we're going to do is just build up a simple contraption here i think we're going to put three harvesters on each one and then we need somewhere to store the items so i guess we might as well just put that on the edge here in fact i'm gonna grab some barrels they'll probably look a bit better there we go much better and then we'll stick a portable storage interface on there and then what that means is if we go roughly is it there i think it should be there We'll stick another interface there. Put an upgraded chest underneath it. So what we've done is we actually took a chest, we wrapped it in iron, then we wrapped it in gold, and that's given us a much bigger chest, which is going to be fine for now. We will, of course, upgrade this storage at some point. And then we put a chute on the top, and I think... I think that should work. I think that's basically everything. So right-click the bearing with an empty hand. So that should attach the structure in front of it. And then if we tap that and right, okay, yep, yeah, we need to, <laughs> we need the super glue. Of course we need the super glue. So let's actually glue the whole thing together. We'll glue that to that, that to that, and that to that. Now, hopefully this time it'll actually work when we turn it on. Look at that. Beautiful. And what that's going to do is it's going to rotate round. It will connect to this every time it spins. And if it's got stuff to drop off, it will empty. But basically, these things are just going to auto harvest whatever's in front of it. So we can plant whatever crops we want and we can just collect them all in this chest. But well, I'm going to turn it off for now because, well, we don't have any water in the farm and we don't have any crops. Plus, I need to build three more of these. So, yeah, I think I'm going to do that first, actually. Let's get the rest of these quickly built up. It should only take a moment. I've got all four of the farms in. They seem to be spinning and doing their thing, which is marvellous. And you may notice I've actually made them a bit longer. I realised I might as well make them four as the, uh, the, the storage thing was sticking out anyway. 
But yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Although we could do with some crops. So we've got a bunch of seeds from Sifting Dirt. So let's see what we've actually got, shall we? So it looks like we have seven things we can plant at the moment. So what I'm probably going to do is put two on each field. And then we'll just fill up the last field with a bit of sugar cane. Which means I'm going to need to add some more water. I think I'm going to turn these off while I plant. And because I'm a smart smart, I did actually put a kill switch in the middle here. I've just got to make sure it's in the right place when I do it. Because otherwise when they turn back to solid blocks... It will kill the rest of my crops, so we don't want that. But we didn't have quite enough seeds to fill everything up, but we've got beetroot, wheat, and sugarcane so far in this field. And over here, we've got the berries. We've got, I can't remember what this one is. I think this one's flax. Yeah, that one's the flax. Then we've got tomatoes, and we've got cabbages. So we're going to need to find some more seeds at some point. But for now, I think we can turn this farm on, and we can just replant more fields and expand the crops further as they get harvested. Let's just hope it works. Systems on. Looks like it's spinning round. Okay, well, we can't get sugar cane. That's clearly not going to work. But it looks like the rest are going to be absolutely fine. So I guess with the sugar cane, we can get it to work. But we'll have to do it slightly differently. So with this one, if I was to raise the harvesters up by a block, then it would just harvest the top level of the sugar cane and leave the bottom level. Brilliant. And now when the sugar cane grows, it should then get harvested. That's definitely a much better way of doing things over here. So I'm going to take a bird's eye view for a few minutes in free cam. I'm going to let these fields do their thing, let them collect some resources, and then I can look at actually planting a few more and filling out some of these edges. Now this is looking much better. Look at everything working. We've got some walls in. I've got the leaves down. And over a bit of time, we did manage to get enough seeds to sort of fill in the other bits as well. And not only that, we are collecting loads and loads of resources, which are going to come in very, very handy. Although I have no idea what they are. And if we have a look at this in free cam, we can see how it's all working. And I just absolutely love this. Create is so cool. However, the storage on this section is still very manual at the moment. And I guess what we want to do is feed it all into a storage room. But we don't really have a proper storage room at the moment. What we do have is a bunch of drawers and chests and things in this building. And, and that's about it. But that's just not good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to build another island. We're going to make it a nice big island this time. Probably at least two, three times the size of these ones. It, it really does need to be quite big. And what we're going to do is start off just by putting a small storage unit on it. And eventually we are going to fill up the whole island with a factory and all the other bits and bobs we need. But essentially, we just need a really big area where we can build things. And as our cobble has been producing, look at that. We've got 7,000 cobble. We've got 11,000 dirt. And we've got... Yeah, 14,000 stones. So this has just been running the whole time. And I suppose once we do get the storage actually into another building over here, we can actually move this stuff indoors. That would be nice because that stuff looks a right mess. So I guess the rest of my day is going to be placing blocks. But I did hear of this really cool trick that if you go into a house like this and then close the door, then when you open it again and run outside, there's an island down there. Look, it worked. There's an island. How cool is that? So it is, of course, a couple of hours later, but we have lots and lots of space here to build. And the first thing we want to do is sort out our storage. So for our initial plan for storage, we are going to use storage drawers. And I actually really like these ones. They're actually made of the mahogany. So if we just quickly make up a few more, I'll show you what I mean. So this is what we're going to be using. And each one of these slots here will hold eight stacks of an item, but they can also be upgraded. So as they start to fill up, we can upgrade them further. But most importantly, they have something called a draw controller. And that's basically basically a box I can go up to and just dump my entire inventory in and it will automatically sort out into all the different slots that's needed. However, the problem with this recipe is we're going to need lots of quartz. In fact, we're going to need 19 quartz because we need one for this. And of course, we need some for the blocks of quartz as well. And I don't have access to quartz currently. However, if we actually have a look here, it looks like we can get some by crushing. And this is going to be the easiest way for us. We do have rotational power with the create mod and we've got a buttload of diorite from sifting dirt. So this is going to be by far our easiest way to get quartz which means we need to build some things to actually get that done. The main part of that being to make crushing wheels, we actually need to do a massive recipe. And to do that massive recipe, we're going to need lots of mechanical crafting stuff. And the problems continue because for mechanical crafting, we need brass casing. For brass casing, we of course need brass. And I don't even know how we get brass. Copper, zinc, heated copper and zinc in that. That's that's never going to happen. Oh my days. Okay, maybe, maybe we're not going to have a storage controller today. 
Oh, this is sad. I really wanted a storage controller. Fine, well, the game's not going to let me have one. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to build up the drawers. We're going to build up storage anyway. And I guess we'll just have to leave a hole for the storage controller. So we're probably actually going to need the factory before we can go too far with the storage and actually automate it as much as we want to. But that's fine. That's not a problem. For now, we can at least get the build down. And I think what I want to do is, well, although we've made a big island, probably could be a little bit bigger. And I, I might make it a little bit bigger between episodes. But for the storage area, what I actually want to do is kind of hang it over the edge just to do something a little bit quirky and leave as much space as possible for the power station and the factory that we're going to need to put over there. Anyway, that's enough waffle for me. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of blocks and see if we can get something in here that we can then use for storage. We'll just start with the platform first, which means we get to select a nice wood to use. And I have taken advantage of this space and I've harvested lots and lots of trees, which I've been putting into the giant storage crates. So we've got lots of wood to be working with. So we should be absolutely fine for this platform. And while I think of it, something else we have access to is this, which is a carpentry bench. And I believe this works in a similar way to the glass blowing one. Yes, look at this look. So we've got access to lots of different wood types and so on. I do wonder, does it do planks as well? It does, so there's a buttload of different planks. This is very cool. I've got down a basic platform and a frame of what I think I want to build, and it looks a little bit weird and janky at the moment, but it's just a frame. Once we get the walls in, hopefully it'll make sense, but we're gonna have a little outside bit here, the small sort of lean-to that we're gonna have a few of the workbenches in, like that wood one over there. And then in this section here, we're gonna have our main storage going across this back wall and around the corners here. So this is gonna be sort of a bit of a compact storage room. This one here is gonna be a bit more open probably with a higher ceiling and then out here once again we're going to have an outside area because i do have plans for this as well but that should give us plenty of storage at least to begin with and the good thing is i guess we can always go underground if we need to as well but what i need to do now is get in some walls and once again we're going to be sticking with a similar palette so we're going to be using stone variants on the bottom layer here and then we'll be using oak and mangrove for the walls and the roof at the top and hopefully this will get done fairly quickly it should come together fairly quickly i mean i know what i'm doing right well it turns out i don't have a clue what i'm doing and this has been taking forever but we are making some good progress we've managed to get the roof on we've got the shape in and i really like how these walls have come out i was playing around with all the different brick types so much because i also built myself a masonry table which basically does the same thing as the wood and the glass blowing one but i do like how this building's come out i have made a start on the interior as well we'll go to that in a minute but basically the main storage unit is all this bit here We've got the workshop sticking out the front here. We've got an area here as well. I did actually set up just a small water wheel beneath just to get a tiny bit of power just because, well, the side of the building looked a bit plain and I wanted some movement. But we could also use that for sort of temporary devices as and when we need to. But I also got a bit carried away and just wanted to spam loads of cogs on a wall. So until we actually have a use for that space, it's the wall of cogs and I like it. And over here, I've just started putting in some of the storage. So I've worked out where a whole bunch of drawers are going to go and we've got plenty of space for expansion if we need more. I decided not to put a top floor in for now. There's holes in the roof. The roof's all a bit janky. And to be honest, that's mainly for a bit of better light during the day. And then we've got the platform out the back here as well, which I've done absolutely nothing with as yet, but I do plan to do something with this area in future. Just probably not today. So the next step is to get everything over here that I've been stashing up in boxes. I mean, that building there is just full of absolute rubbish and some really good stuff as well. So I need to sort out what we want to keep and what we don't. This could take a while. May have found a way to get the storage controller because we can actually to get quartz from washing soul sand we need to get soul sand and i think i've worked out how so what we're going to do is we're going to sift some gravel to get all the resources we need to make a photogenic isolator and then we need to give it some power so we'll make a small generator load it up with coal and stick that around the back we'll then add in some water and some demon seeds and leave it in the sun and eventually we'll get some demon fruit we're then going to throw that on the floor and set fire to it which is going to give us this lovely wibbly wobbly flame and we'll cook up some clay make some bricks and throw them in the fire that's going to give us some nether brick what we can then do is the whole pillory thing again like we do with cobble and that's going to give us an infinite supply of netherrack we'll then build up a fan system we'll put some netherrack in front we'll set fire to it oh no wait that's not gonna work of course that doesn't make blue flame i need soul sand to make the blue flame to make the soul sand Ah, don't panic. I've got another plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to sift more gravel to get all the resources we need to make a crystallizer this time. And then we're going to demote the photogenic isolator and steal all the power. Meanwhile, we're going to be sifting loads of sand to get some quartz dust, which we're then going to add to the crystallizer alongside a few buckets of water. And then we're going to get quartz that way. And there we go. We've actually got some. That thing was as slow as anything. However, that took literally like three minutes. So I'm going to need to find a way to speed this up. We're actually getting quartz now, which is great because it means we can actually make our storage controller. Come you can't throw that away i've just realized i'm a bit of an idiot and i only need four pieces of quartz in order to make a block which means we only need nine pieces in total 
But it has taken about 15 minutes just to get those first four. So we're still going to be here a while, I guess. I'm going to carry on sorting out my storage in the meantime. And you'll be pleased to know, I think we're actually done. I even made this walkway look nice. Look, I didn't want Jeff falling off when he's commuting because apparently Jeff lives over here now. He keeps just moving into my new houses. And I even cleaned up all the mess that was out here. But I mean, the yard does still need a bit of tidying up and so on. But inside, look at this. We have our storage sorted out. So we've got all of our food over here with plenty of space for expansion because I know there's a lot of different food types. I'm fairly sure Farmer's Delight is in this mod, and I really do like that, so uh, expect a kitchen at some point. But I've got bulk storage here for all the items we're going to have lots and lots of. We have our storage controller, which, well, took forever, but now we have it. Oh, my days. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to punch you, Mr. Bat. That was just unfortunate. Although, why did it hurt me? That's weird. And I also decided to make use of the, all of these cogs that we have here, and I've installed myself a lift, and uh, I really did want to use some Create Redstone wireless things, but I can't actually make them at the moment. However, thanks to a couple of Endermen, I was able to make a transmitter here and a receiver up here, which means I can stand on here, flick this lever, and down goes me lift. The problem is it doesn't actually go anywhere at the moment. It, it basically just goes down into the void, and, and I, I can't do anything to get back up until we get there. It's pointless, but it's fun, and I love it. I think that's a really good start to that island, though, and we've sorted our food today. We've had a wonderful time, and I've also cleared up all the mess that was out here, and the plan was to actually put those in here, but I haven't done so yet. However, we do have power going through this area, and that just means that as we're building next episode, as I say, I do want to build a factory, but I'm fairly sure I'm probably going to need to make a couple of other smaller contraptions just to get us there. And now we have the space for it, which is marvellous. Oh, is that Loot B throwing stuff off the edge again? Why you do this to me? Why? Why?